eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me and you will not thirst. I am the bread of sent from the Father. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to me and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, sisters and brothers, to the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today we will hear in our readings that we are all invited to the banquet of life. So we pray together that we may understand what this invitation means for each of us and how to respond it. As we begin our celebration, let us acknowledge that there are times when we have sinned. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy.
let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built herself a house. She has erected her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts, prepared her wine. She has laid her table. She has dispatched her maidservants and proclaimed from the city's heights. Who is ignorant? Let him step this way. To the fool, she says, come and eat my bread. Drink the wine I have prepared. Leave your folly and you will live. Walk in the ways of perception. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Be very careful about the sort of lives you lead, like intelligent and not like senseless people. This may be a wicked age, but your lives should redeem it. And do not be thoughtless, but recognize what is the will of the Lord. Do not drug yourselves with wine. This is simply dissipation. Be filled with the Spirit. Sing the words and tunes of the psalms and hymns when you are together. And go on singing and chanting to the Lord in your hearts, so that 
always and everywhere, you are giving thanks to God, who is our Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life, and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, and whose, whoever eats me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate. They are dead, but anyone who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, do you believe in free lunch or free dinner? Is there such thing as free lunch or free dinner? Will you accept if people invite you? Okay, let's come for lunch or dinner. I believe. There are people who would like just, okay, by their generosity, let's come together and have a meal together because sharing a meal is a joy. But I also admit, there are times I'm very afraid. Especially when, when you need a dinner, right? Okay, after that, hey, how are you? How busy? Uh, what is, are you busy with? And suddenly, by the way, the by the way, suddenly sometimes I choke because of by the way. It's like, okay. Because after the by the way, there's a lot of things. Why? Or can you? Uh, yeah, basically a lot of things after the by the way. So, today, our whole readings is just invitation from the Lord for a free meal. So, are you afraid or not to accept this invitation? The difference between the invitation by the Lord and the invitation that we may receive, the Lord tells us really, tells us in advance, by taking this meal, what is it implying? What is it that we believe as we receive this invitation to this meal? So what is it that the Lord invites us to, that we should understand? Our first reading is from the book of Proverbs. It is clearly from the first word in that reading, it is wisdom that set up the house, build the house, and invite all of us to prepare. So it is actually very, with a purpose that it is written that wisdom is the one who invites us. Because it is wisdom who invites us, if we receive wisdom, then we need to look at things deeper, not just literal meaning. 
What does what did wisdom invite us to? Wisdom invite us to this meal that is free, free from cost, free for for everyone to attend. Why? Because in the first reading we hear the fool, those who are ignorant, those who don't have a place in the society, those who cannot afford, come this way. You are that way. Everyone is welcome to that meal. That is the free meal that we are invited to. The second thing, if we are invited to something free, we, our tendency, including myself, we try to take as much as possible, isn't it? Because who knows tomorrow will not be free anymore. All right? Just take first. If we cannot finish, throw away later. Because free anyway. Right? But this meal is a different meal. Because this meal will not end. There is no limit to this. So that was the wisdom invitation for all of us. That take a look at this meal invitation because this is something bigger than what we can understand. We need to reflect before we accept. And Jesus completes this invitation through the gospel. Because in the gospel, Jesus explains what is this meal all about. Why is this so free? Why is this everyone can come? Why everyone can take part and will not end? There is no limit in this meal. So Jesus, in this gospel is actually explaining about his priesthood. If we take things literally, like the, like the people at that time, they were actually arguing who is greater, Jesus or Moses. Because Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, out of uh, slavery. They actually were put Moses as very high. But now Jesus, come the storm, feed 5,000. So who is better? We like to do that, right? I mean, like, okay, which one, which one is better? This prayer priest and previous one, which one better? That kind of thing. We like to do that. And they did that. Actually, they were arguing. That's why Jesus said, this is not the bread that, uh, of our ancestors. This is the bread that will give you life. And Jesus, by saying that, is Jesus offering us to understand his priesthood. What is the difference between Jesus' priesthood and the priesthood of all the previous priests, especially those in the Old Testament before Jesus. In the Old Testament, the priest would offer sacrifice. Jesus would offer sacrifice. But in the sacrifice in the Old Testament of the other priests, they will sacrifice a lamb, a goat, pigeon. They will sacrifice something else. While Jesus is telling us that I will give myself. This is the sacrifice for the sake of our life. And he didn't stop there. Jesus said, because I draw life from my Father, and I would like to give that life to you. So what does it mean if we accept this invitation to receive the body of Christ? If we draw life from Jesus... That means we are also called to also practice our priesthood, which means to give our life to the people around us, to the people that we encounter. That is our priesthood. During Offer Tree, all of us join in our priesthood. We offer, some of us offer money, some of us offer our week, some of us offer our whatever that we have gone through throughout the week. But today, we are reminded that our offer tree, our offering, we are joining Jesus in the offer tree of Jesus himself. And by joining Jesus, we are committing, we are accepting, yes, I will receive that communion, I want to be one with Jesus, so that I can offer my life to the people around me as well. So that my life can bring life to other people as well. So that's the invitation, sisters and brothers. Do you dare to accept the Holy Communion now? That's the beauty that Jesus wants us to take part in his life. What does it mean for all of us to take part in Jesus' life? Yes, we would like to give our life. Yes, I am willing to sacrifice my life to, to join Jesus. What does it really mean? It is explained beautifully in the second reading. 
in the letter to the Ephesians. If we want to be alive, if we want to live our life to the fullest, St. Paul offered three advice in that reading. The first thing in that reading, second reading uh, from the letter to to the Ephesians, St. Paul said, live your life, be intelligent. Don't be senseless. It doesn't mean you have to take your degree, master's or PhD, no. Be intelligent means, he explained further that always seek the will of the Lord. Always ask the Lord, why am I created? I am not to be another person. There's a specific reason why God gave me life to be who I am. Always seek the will of the Lord. That means we always have to pray. That's the first thing. If you want to live a life that is fully alive, we need to pray, seek the will of God. Second one, very literal. Don't get drunk with wine. Some of the friars are also struggling with this. <laughs> Don't get drunk with wine, but fill yourself with the Spirit. What St. Paul is trying to tell us, wine, alcoholism, our handphone, anything that we are addicted to is an escape from life because we want to run away from life. But if we want to really fully alive, fill ourselves with the Spirit, surround ourselves with good relationships, treasure our life with good relationships, nurture that relationship that bring us to really who we are meant to be, to be fully alive. Seek the will of God. Don't get drunk. Fill your life with spirit. And the last one, St. Paul said, always give thanks to God. When we give thanks to God, when we find that our life is enough, is beautiful, and I praise God for my life, then we will truly be happy, truly alive. So this is the invitation from the Lord, free for everyone. As long as we accept this Lord, accept this life, if we draw life from Him, we will be able to live our life as well. So seek the will of God. Don't get drunk. And always give thanks in all situations in our life. This way, we will truly be alive. We will truly be one with Christ and with one another. Let us pray for one another. May God's peace be with all of us. Responding to the Lord's invitation, let us now rise and we profess our faith in this God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. United with Christ through his body and blood, we offer our prayers for the, need, for the needs of our world and our community. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, that he be blessed abundantly with the courage to lead the faithful with wisdom, integrity, and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government and civic leaders, that they be guided by wisdom to restore the world to right relationship with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all inquirers in the RCIA participating in the rite of acceptance this weekend, that their faith journey be filled with hope, strength, and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community of St. Mary of the Angels, that we be more willing to give our time, our hospitality, 
our understanding and our acceptance to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of wisdom, hear our prayers, that with faith and hope, we will be loving witnesses of your power and presence in the world. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his children. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you. And drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis, St. Clair, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of love and peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe you are really here in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you more than anything in the world, and I hunger to receive you. But since I cannot receive communion at this time, feed my soul at least spiritually. I unite myself to you now, as I do when I actually receive you in Holy Communion. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, the big event is just around the corner. And I hope that if you balloted for your tickets for the papal mass, you got your tickets. But hey, this is not Pope Francis. He wants that his visit be a pastoral visit, a visit in which we will unite with the universal mission of Christ and his church. And so while we come together to pray, and while some of us might be there at the stadium, we must first prepare ourselves for our Holy Father's visit. On the first Thursday of September and the first Friday of September, we will come together in prayer, in prayer for the intentions of our Holy Father, in prayer for the world in which he comes as a missionary, uniting ourselves with the mission of Christ for the world. This is what he says about prayer. Those who pray never turn their backs on the world. If prayer does not gather the joys and sorrows, the hopes and anxieties of humanity, it becomes decorative, superficial, theatrical. This is what Pope Francis doesn't want his visit to be. So let us then come together first to look into our hearts, to prepare ourselves spiritually for our Holy Father's visit. Then, as an extension of his visit, he always wanted the church to be a field hospital in touch with the wounds of our brothers and sisters. And therefore, on the 800th anniversary of the Stigmata, on the 17th of September, we will then celebrate the wounds of our brothers and sisters in their journey of life with the anointing of the sick. We will also then be extending our awareness of our brothers and sisters who are called to move beyond limitations and expectations when something like a massive stroke comes and they need to get back on their feet. That awareness of our call to serve in the church and to be aware of what is offered in service of our brothers and sisters. Pope Francis was always very close to the migrants. People who had to leave their homes in search of a better life to build their lives together, that we become part of their journey in sharing this global fraternity before God. And so St. Mary's will host the Archdiocesan Migrant Sunday in celebration of our brothers and sisters. With all this going on, this will be our preparation and extension of the visit of our Holy Father, uniting St. Mary's with the universal call and mission of Christ that he represents. Let us then come together first in prayer and then into the awareness of our fraternal brotherhood and sisterhood in Laudato Si.
Chotumate, Chotumate. Just before we go, something to say to all of you who made this feast day wonderful. Thank you. We're nothing special, just out here in the West. If we hold a fun fair, it's something done before. But we have a talent for making things new. Cause everyone comes forth when we start to do. We are so grateful and proud. All we want, want is to, to do, do it for God. God. So I say thank you for the feasting, the funds we raise. Thanks for all the joy we're bringing. Who can go without you? I ask in all honesty. What would we be without a dinner and dance? What are we? Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God.